Hello and welcome to the Starting Admex series, the series in which we go from your first purchase to your first 2000 point army list and everything in between. In this video we'll take a look at the elite slot choices for the Admech. To begin this video, I'll say this much, the elite choice used to be a lot more important for Admech, but with the advent of Engine War and all of the incredible fast attack choices we've gotten, a lot of the elite choices have been edged out slightly, and at this time, the elite choice is probably one of the weakest within the Admech army. However, being a weak choice in a very strong army still makes you very exciting, and there's a lot the elite choice can bring to an Admech army. The following list of different units will first cover the units found in the Codex, and then we'll take a look at the units found in the Forge World model range. And the list is essentially from strongest to weakest in terms of raw power level. As oftentimes, different units can become significantly stronger based on their utility versus their raw power. And situationally, they can be significantly better than they would otherwise be considered in a generic sense. At the top of the list for the elite choice is the Fulgrite Electro Priest. The Fulgrite Electro Priest is incredibly good in Admech, considering that the Admech forces are generally a shooty list that can do melee somewhat decently. The Fulgrites offer a very serious melee threat that can do incredible damage on its own, even in an army that otherwise lacks melee altogether. To look at the Fulgrite Electro Priest, the first thing we have to consider is that they have an incredibly powerful stat line in melee combat, having a decent number of attacks, a reasonably high strength, good AP, and being able to turn their attacks into mortal wounds. These guys are an incredibly powerful bully unit that can pick off most things in melee combat. On top of their already strong melee options, they do have a stratagem that they can use, which gives them the ability to fight twice. This stratagem, however, is rather expensive at three command points to use but seeing as how powerful this unit can be in melee it's well worth it in many occasions if it means wiping out a unit one thing i will note is that the stratagem is not restricted to the fulgrite specifically but rather to any electro priests so the corpus carry can use it as well however the corpus carry have a much weaker melee than the fulgrites so this stratagem generally falls onto the fulgrites more often than the corpus carry and on top of that, you can also add in the Canticle, which gives plus one strength that would modify the attack strength of the unit. As it modifies the strength of the unit and not the weapon that's shooting, as they'll be fighting in melee, that does contribute to it, so you can get them even stronger. Now, the scariest thing about the Fulgrites isn't just their melee, which is already really powerful, but the fact that they can become incredibly potent if they wipe out a unit. And this is what really makes them a great bully unit, especially in 9th edition, where many small units, otherwise known as MSU, is very popular, thanks to blast weapons and holding objectives. What ends up happening is if you can snipe a unit off of an objective, the Fulgrites go from having a 5 plus invulnerable save to a 3 plus invulnerable save for the rest of the game. And this makes them incredibly resilient in addition to their 5 plus feel no pain save. So no matter what your opponent is shooting them with, they get a 3 plus save and then a 5 plus save, making them incredibly hard to kill while also being an incredibly potent threat in melee combat. This is why they're such a great bully unit because they can threaten anything holding an objective and not only potentially take the objective but also become incredibly resilient and hard to push off of that objective if they happen to kill a unit. In other words, your opponent's always going to have to worry about how they position their units around the Fulgurites because at any point the game can really swing. This does in turn make them a big threat because before they kill a unit in melee, they're actually somewhat vulnerable with only a 5 plus invulnerable save and a 5 plus feel no pain save. They're not the squishiest unit in the world, but they're definitely a lot more vulnerable than you would sometimes like if you just put them out in the open and try to walk them up the board. One other thing I should mention is that when an Electro Priest squad makes a successful charge attack, they trigger their Voltgeist field, which says that for each Electro Priest that ends up in charge range, you roll a d6 and for each 6, the enemy models encounter a mortal wound. This is actually very powerful in softening up units, however, there's one thing to take into account when using this ability, and that is, if the unit that you're charging dies from the Voltgeist field and is completely wiped out, then the Electro Priests do not actually gain their buffed and vulnerable save. That only occurs if they wipe out a unit in melee combat. So sometimes your opponent can create a situation in which they have a model on an objective that ends up dying from the Voltgeist field or flees or dies in some other way other than the fight phase. They can deny you that improved mortal wound save as well as potentially stranding you in the middle of nowhere. So just keep that in mind when charging a unit because the Voltgeist field always triggers and you don't have the option of not using it. As the Fulgurites are a melee threat and definitely want to make it into close range but are a bit vulnerable if you march them up the board, you definitely want to put them into a transport or strategic reserves. 
The end depending on the transport or strategic reserves you're using, you take anywhere from a squad of 10 to 12. And the reason you always want to take a larger squad versus a smaller squad is because the buffed and vulnerable save only triggers once that unit slays another unit in combat. And this means that if you're taking a lot of small units, you're going to have a lot less priests with that invulnerable save. More so due to the cost of the stratagem to fight twice, it becomes a lot less efficient the less models you have in a squad. By maximizing the units in a squad, you maximize the results you get from spending those three command points that could otherwise be used in other places. So as a whole, by taking a larger squad, you end up giving yourself the most benefit with these units. And as mentioned in part two of this series, the best forge world for the Fulgrites is Stygies 8. And the reason you want to run them with Stygies 8 is because not only do they gain more resilience while making their way across the board, thanks to the Stygies dogma, if they're benefiting from it, which encourages your opponent to get into melee range, but it also lets you move the transport that they're in along with them or simply a squad of them on the first turn before any movement is taken so that lets them get even closer to your enemy or to the objective on which you wish to use them as a bully unit. After the Fulgurites we come to the second unit that the Electro Priests can build out of their box set and that is the Corpus Gary Electro Priests. The Corpus Gary Electro Priests are probably almost as good as the Fulgurites but they're a very different unit. Whereas Fulgurites specialize very heavily in melee and can become incredibly powerful if given the ability to. The Corpus Cari, on the other hand, which are their rival faction, are more of a generalist unit that can do a little bit of everything and be reasonably resilient, but cannot be as explosive. So what do the Corpus Cari have? Unlike the Fulgurites, the Corpus Cari can shoot. Their range is rather short, but they each get three shots at strength five, and each hit roll of six nets them two additional hits. Now, this can be used with a lot of different things. The first thing you can do is you can put the Corpus Cari Electro Priests in a Lucius detachment and have them teleport in as their range is longer than the teleportation restriction so you can get them in range and this allows you to get them into range despite their short range so that you can make an attack at full power. Now, the Corpus Cari don't have any built-in AP like the Fulgurites do. However, they do have a stratagem that bumps their AP up to two if used for one command point. So all of a sudden it takes their reasonably weak shots and turns them into rather powerful armor shredding shots. This means a squad of 10 is outputting 30 shots and when you take into account the exploding shots, you're bound to get about 30 hits. With AP minus two and strength five, you're gonna get a serious amount of damage on whatever you're shooting. Additionally, the Corpus Cari are no slouches in melee combat, with each of them getting two attack rolls at strength 5, with the same exploding hits profile on 6s, which net two additional hits. As you can teleport them within 9 inches, you can also teleport a Manipulus next to them, using the Solar Flare War Gear from Lucius, in order to buff their charge range by 1 inch, so that they have an easier time getting into melee. More so, I should also mention they have the Voltgeist field that the Fulgrites have, so whenever they charge, they also trigger mortal wounds on a roll of six with whatever they're charging. So all of a sudden, you can teleport these guys in, get a bunch of shots off at minus two AP, then charge in, probably score a couple mortal wounds, and then continue to pummel anything you're charging in close combat. And don't forget the fight twice stratagem I mentioned previously can also apply to the Corpus Carry. It is not restricted to the Fulgrite Electro Priests, this means that if you're really fighting a priority target, you can do all of that and then you can pay three command points to fight a second time within that same combat phase to wipe out whatever unit you need to push off of the objective. Now, Lucius isn't the only Forge World that they're restricted to. It's simply that it lets them make the most of their abilities, including their invulnerable save, which goes to a 4 plus with the Lucius Canicle. But you can also use them in other ways, such as with Mars, where due to the high volume of shots that they have, if you put them in strategic reserves or transport and then get them close to an enemy, you can use Wrath of Mars on them in order to score a bunch of additional mortal wounds, helping you delete whatever they're shooting at. The reason for this is, once again, with the same shooting, 10 Corpus Cari Electro Priests, you're going to get about 30 hits on average from the exploding shots. This means that on those 30 hits, you're bound to, on average, get 5 rolls of 6, which means 5 additional mortal wounds. Pretty good for a squad of 10 models. And one other thing I should mention is that the Corpus Cari Electro Priests are less points than the Fulgurites. So in closing, the Fulgurites and the Corpus Cari are two incredibly good units. The Fulgurites are a little more explosive and more focused than what they do, while the Corpus Cari are better generalists who can do everything and hold their own pretty well. I think most Admech armies can benefit from bringing one or the other of these, and it's not necessarily wrong to mix and match these, though you definitely want at least units of 10 in most cases when bringing either one of these, and either one of these can do a lot of work within a list. 
After the Electro Priest, most of the choices are significantly weaker, but the choice that comes closest to the Electro Priest is probably the Sicarian Infiltrators. The Sicarian Infiltrators are a rather cool model, but unfortunately they've taken a rather hard hit going into 9th edition, which has taken them from seeing a decent amount of play to seeing a lot less play, if any at all. The biggest changes going into 9th edition was the points increase, which really put them up there in points. And in addition to that, the Taser Goad got nerfed, which made it a lot weaker than once used to be, as now it only triggers on an unmodified roll of 6. And on top of all of this, Engine War brought us the Taraxi models within the fast attack slot, which have a better mobility than the Infiltrators, as well as having slightly longer range weapons, and the ability to deep strike a little more than the Infiltrators can, while also being less points. Now on top of all of these issues, the Infiltrators don't have the best stat line, neither do they have the best saves. More so, they're limited in how you can outfit them, as you cannot mix and match their weapon choices, but rather you're locked into either taking a Macro Stubber with the Power Swords, or the Flechette Blasters with the Taser Goads. The issue with this is, is that recently Power Swords received a bit of a buff, while the Taser Goads received a bit of a nerf. Now, the Macro Stubber is generally weaker than the Flechette Blaster, and the reason it's weaker is that the Flechette Blaster has a large amount of shots, which can benefit from stratagems like Wrath of Mars, seeing as the Infiltrators don't have any stratagems unique to them like most other units do. This hurts them, as once again they're a little behind the curve, and now they don't even have a special stratagem. Though, without having a special stratagem, they do have a special ability, which is the Infiltration ability, which allows them to essentially Deep Strike, and that's pretty nice since you can Deep Strike, shoot at one unit with your ranged weapon, and then try to charge another unit. Though, once again, you're forced to either take the Power Sword or the Flechette Blaster, depending on which one you want. At this time, I think the Power Sword with the Macro Stubber is a little better, but there's definitely argument to be made for the Flechette Blaster. And the Taser Goad, despite its nerf, is still not the worst weapon in the game. Now they do have one other special ability, which is a leadership debuff in their Neurostatic Aura, but it's not particularly great, and usually if you're taking a squad of these guys and getting them into combat, they're probably going to handle most of what they're hitting, and the leadership debuff isn't going to play a major role, and I would normally say that's not a big deal if the ability was free, but due to their points cost, it doesn't seem like you're getting this ability for free when comparing them to Taraxi, so I'd have to say this is actually one of those times where if they didn't have this ability, they'd probably be less points, and they'd probably see more play. So, unfortunately, they're kind of in a rough spot right now, but that can really easily change since the biggest issue with them is their points cost. And if the points were adjusted a little bit, you might see a resurgence of them. Um, I just realized that I've been saying Macro Stubber when they actually have a Stub Carbine. My bad, that's a little mistake. Luckily, I caught it while I was still recording the audio for this, instead of having to put up a picture on screen to clarify this. Anyway, minor mistake, but just wanted to point that out that it's actually a Stub Carbine that the Infiltrators have. After the Infiltrators, we come to the second unit that can be built out of the box of the Sicarians, known as the Sicarian Rust Stalkers. This is actually one of my favorite models, but unfortunately this unit isn't particularly strong at this current time. The issue is, is that while the Sicarian Rust Stalkers have a decent movement profile, the Taraxi actually have a better movement profile than them, and have better weapons overall. The Sicarian Rust Stalkers are a melee only unit, and both their melee options are decent. They have the ability to score additional mortal wounds, and they both look kind of cool. However, the biggest problem that they have is they have a rather weak stat line and rather weak saves, considering that you're trying to get them into melee combat, and their points cost, in addition to that, does not really reflect the stat line that they get because they're worth a little more points than they need to be. As such, the Fulgrites just outclass them in every way when it comes to melee, and the Traxi outclass them in mobility and firepower in general, while still being okay in melee, such as the Sterilizer, and this puts them in this weird position where if you're trying to get them into melee, what you're really trying to do is roll sixes on their attacks so that you can turn them into mortal wounds rather than having them be basic attacks. And that's never really the place you want to be with a model like this. However, even though they're not that impressive overall at this time, people have had some success with them by using the new engine war stratagem that's unique to them, Circuitous Assassins, which lets you get them close to a table edge, remove them off the board, and deploy them near a different table edge. This allows you to give them a lot more mobility than they would otherwise have, giving them the ability to harass objectives and annoy your opponent. However, the Taraxi have a similar sort of ability that's a little more restrictive in terms of how you can use it, but they can also take off and redeploy. 
the circuitous assassin ability is more flexible than that because you can use it more often, but it does have its own limitations due to how it functions with table edges. And again, to use it, you have to take rust stalkers, which probably aren't going to be doing much in terms of dealing damage or fighting, but rather you'd be using them as decoy units. And I think they're just better choices for that role than the rust stalkers. Anyway, that's all I have to say for them. Again, they're a really awesome model. I hope they get a buff in the future so that they can be playable again. But at this time, unless you have some extra money to spend, I really wouldn't buy them as they don't really fit a role. And like I said, some people have had success with them using that special stratagem, but I just don't see it. After the Rust Stalkers, we come to the Servitors and the X-101 Special Character Servitor, which is found in the same board game Combat Arena as the Deolosis. The X-101 Servitor is just a special servitor with a grav cannon that can be taken in a unit independent of other servitors. Servitors are incredibly weak and generally are forgotten about from players as you really don't ever see them in games. The problem with servitors is that they're incredibly easy to kill and they have rather weak stat lines while eating up a choice without much modularity. The servitors can take special weapons, but because of how squishy they are and how bad their shooting is, even with a character nearby to buff their shooting, it doesn't really make sense to take them and give them special weapons instead of all of the other options that we have for heavy firepower. I will mention one thing, the servitors aren't completely useless, as they are incredibly low in points, and the X-101 is our lowest point choice within the army, so you could get some utility out of them by taking them in strategic reserves and then infiltrating them onto the table in order to capture an objective while your opponent isn't ready for something to show up, and then allowing them to be sacrificed if needed. This is an interesting bit of utility, and it might be makes sense in some cases as we've seen some players take units like this and other armies to harass objectives that might be left unguarded on say the opponent's edge after a certain amount of turns because they've advanced forward to take the midboard. Is it something that you should be aiming for every game or is it something that's going to be incredibly viable going into the future? Maybe maybe not but they are incredibly squishy so it's very easy for your opponent to potentially take that objective back and in that sense maybe the rust stalkers despite being a little bit more points are better than them but it's a hard call and it's really a decision for you to make. Finally we come to the cybernetic datasmith which is the last elite choice out of the codex and engine war. The cybernetic datasmith is something you get in every box of castlins you buy and he is a character so you can pick up non-holy order warlord traits using one of our stratagems though most of them are probably not worth it and you can probably pick up a different character. So what does the datasmith really bring? Well, he has Master of the Machines, which is restricted to Castellan robots, and he can switch the robot's protocols. However, if he switches the robot protocols, you have to wait until your next turn for them to kick in, which gives your opponent a lot of time to set up and essentially outplay you. Uh, due to have some of the protocols work. And the other issue with this is that the Stratagem uh, Binaric Override, which lets you switch the protocols instantly and locks the robots into place, is usually the way that you will go about switching the robot protocols. So the Datasmith kind of doesn't fill that role very well, but he can do it once in a while. Um, I wouldn't really count on it though. And this is probably why the Datasmith is one of our weakest units in the Codex, because he's more points than the Engine Seer, so he doesn't really act as a character better than the Engine Seer. And as such, he's not really a choice for taking extra Warlord traits since you would just take an Engine Seer as a character. And he doesn't really fit an Elite slot because while his stats are better, something like X-101 or Servitors are a significantly cheaper choice than him also. So they can fit the Elite slot much easier while also giving you more bodies. So really his only benefit is his stat line and the ability to heal and switch the protocols of castle and robots. And that's really just not enough for his points value. So at this time, I would say the best use of a cybernetic datasmith would probably be as a conversion model to either make a Deolosis or some other character such as a Manipulus or just as a cool looking character in general. You know, and you might end up getting stuck with a couple of them because each box of castlins comes with one. So yeah, he's, he's kind of not very good. <laughs> Now that we've covered all of the Elite choices from the Basic Codex, we come to choices from the company Forge World. There are only two of them in the Elite slot, and one of them is reasonably playable, and the other is probably not very playable. The first choice is the Hoplites, and these, like the other choice, have been updated recently when all of the Forge World units that remained in 40k got updated. There was a misinterpretation in the original update as there was a very hard to see photo released which made it look like they were 12 points a model. However, now that people actually have the book, these are only 10 points a model, not 12 points. You can also now take them in units of 5 to 10 
and for whatever reason they can no longer board an assault drill. I'm guessing this is an oversight and it will return in the future, but who knows, maybe it won't. So what are the hoplites? The hoplites belong to the Secutari and they are kind of like Skitari in their stats, but they tend to be a little better at 10 points a model. They definitely aren't a bad choice and they can provide some interesting benefits to an army. Though, what you have to remember is because they're Secutari, they do not benefit from any of the Forge World Dogmas, they don't have any stratagems, though they do get Canicles, which is nice. However, they don't get the special Forge World Canicles, which does make them a little bit weaker than, say, the Electro Priests. Though I would put them above the Infiltrators at this time. The most interesting thing about the Hoplites is that they're almost like a Corpus Cari Electro Priest and that they have a weapon that's both shooting and melee in their spears. And this weapon actually has a pretty strong profile with having a little more strength and more AP baseline than the um, Corpus Cari shooting weapon and melee weapon. Though it does get less shots than the Corpus Cari do. And it's an arc weapon, so it does have the arc weapon buff of gaining more wounds against vehicles. So this makes them a decent all-around threat, while being a little cheaper than the Electro Priests. And one important thing to take note of is that they have mag inverter shields. So in melee combat, they actually go up to a very impressive and vulnerable save of 4+. Plus, and they can reflect damage back on a roll of 6 to save from that shield, which lets you deal one mortal wound for every attack reflected. And this is kind of like the Castellan Robot shield, except for melee instead of shooting. This makes the Hoplites a rather decent screening unit for threats against melee, since not only can they actually shoot pretty well within close range, but anything that does get in melee with them is going to have a bit of a hard time beating them. However, as their shields only really work in melee, their normal saves and invulnerable saves are not particularly great, and they don't get a feel no pain like the Electro Priests do. So again, they're not a bad choice, they're not expensive, and now that you can take them in units of 5, you can make them even cheaper, and they might have a place in the army. Army. It's just a matter of asking yourself, do you want them over other options? Again, I don't want to make it sound like they're a bad unit. They're definitely not. It's just that I think their units are slightly better than them at filling the different roles, though they do have a pretty impressive melee ability and we are light on melee units. If they could benefit from Forge World Dogmas, they would actually be incredibly strong because you could put them in a Data Horde Forge World to gain the benefits of the Transnode Power Cores, so you could all of a sudden take them alongside Breachers and have the benefit in both shooting and melee. And unfortunately, in this update, they didn't get the ability to gain Forge World buffs still, so... You can't really get them to that super powerful level like you can with Breachers. Oh well, maybe next time. And finally, to wrap up this list, we come to the Secutari Peltasts. The Secutari Peltasts, just like the Hoplites, can benefit from Canticles, but cannot benefit from things like Dogma Stratagems or Special Forge World Canticles. Though, unlike the Hoplites, they're more comparable to the Vanguard and Rangers than they are to the Electro Priests. They are the same points cost as Rangers and Vanguard being 9 points a model and can be taken in units of 5 to 10 models. But unlike the Rangers or Vanguard, their shooting weapons have two different profiles, which one mimics pretty much the Vanguard while being slightly stronger, and the other profile is a heavy weapon shot that is 24 inches and can have a pretty decent strength. However, unlike the Rangers or Vanguard, they cannot take special weapons, so they're pretty much stuck with their base weapon that has those two profiles. They're not particularly bad weapons, and if for whatever reason you're just looking to fill up another 45 points, let's say, they might be something you pick up. But maybe the Hoplites are just better in that case as well. The Peltas bring one other special ability to the table, which is something they can use once a game, which is a blinding barrage. And what that gives them is a little bit more survivability, but they cannot shoot that round. All it does is make it a little harder for the enemy to hit, so maybe it gives them a little more ability to survive while holding an objective, but it's such a weak buff and there are just better ways of doing that, so I really wouldn't count on using it pretty much ever. So all you're really gaining from taking Peltas is their base shooting weapons, which can have that kind of vanguard profile or that heavy weapon profile. It's not the worst in the world, and it can probably be okay, but I just don't think they're particularly good, especially with all the restrictions and the fact that you can just replace them with Rangers and Vanguard even though they're in a different slot and have a little more mileage out of those. Because remember, the Peltas can't have a Forge World affiliation, so they can't be like the Vanguard, and they can't use the Grey Stratagem, which is very important in a lot of games. And additionally, they don't have that additional debuff ability that the Vanguard have. So I just don't see them as being particularly good, and I'd rather just use something else to be honest. Maybe I'll try them out sometime. Anyway, as always, remember, if you enjoy my content, please subscribe and like this video as it really helps a new channel such as mine. And as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.